when I really think about it, this is kind of recording records, you know? I have access to all the facts, uh, all the cards are hidden, perhaps in disorder, perhaps with missing pieces, within these walls. I am the dealer, you, listener, are the player, but the library is the deck. Enough of my mutterings, though. The book tells me that the best way to record is to be concise. To any listeners, though, I promise only to try. I'm prone to allowing my train of thought to run into the fantasy land inhabited by the detectives and scientists of my favourite novels, and getting wrapped into mysterious murders filled with the terrific twists and gripping deceit that is synonymous with that most glorious first age fiction. I think I may have slipped already. Well, no matter, I suppose. The book is to be received with a pinch of salt, I think. I'm sure it tells me all sorts of things, but despite its usefulness in helping me restore this recording device, most of its utterances are relatively useless. Uh, listen to this section. As you record, you may experience extreme negative emotions such as sadness, anger, and fear specifically a sudden anxious feeling that you may have left the gas on or left washing out in the rain. Admittedly, some of it is a bit bonkers. However, were it total bonkers, you wouldn't be listening to me now. We must remember that this library is a collection of artefacts, writings and records from a civilization long disappeared. Some of its wisdoms will surpass our understanding, I guess. This was the definitive guide on how the great intellects of olden times, the scientists, the historians, the detectives, kept their minds so sharp by using all kinds of different recording devices. You never know when you might lose track of vital facts. Well, I would argue that I fit into that same category, and What's more, there's little to halt my curiosity. Honestly, I'd have been looking for some time to record my thoughts and the everyday and the things that I do. But I realised after the recovery and restoration of this machine that I didn't really pursue anything worthy of note. In the books that I read, People's lives are filled with mystery. The, they chase the next clue, the next story, they're gunning for the next enemy. It's always like, fork in the road. Which way? Left or right? Which way? Left or right? Uh, turn! Left. Well, this is why I'm not a storyteller. Instead, I read. And sleep. And eat. And clean. But, 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 but... This is why now I get to record things, because I have an investigation to pursue. Allow me to explain. One of my jobs as librarian of and keeper of this enormous collection is to log books and documents that my anonymous predecessors had not added to their databases at the time of their eviction from stroke abandonment of the whole place. I've assumed that, barring a very unlikely return to the library, I will never meet these buffoons, and they shall be glad that I don't. I've held this post for many years and corrected so many of their mistakes, but still, their incompetence hounds me. Anyway, in these searches that I conduct once a fortnight, I often find books that were 
improperly or hurriedly stored at the cost of my precious time, though sensationally unfruitful for the most part, when I do come upon such manuscript, my yield is most noteworthy. For instance, the accompanying manual for the machine I'm currently communicating via was found wedged between two bookshelves, uh, both of which I had to move, by the way, and was only given away by the glint of its red leather binding. My much-referenced definitive recording guide was mislabeled as a children's book, but was placed in the diaries section. In a similar fashion, two days ago, I found a letter wedged in a portfolio of very old photographs. The photographs appear to have been taken on the streets of a city with various residents included, apparently unaware of their picture being taken. The letter was actually glued, yes glued, into the centre of the book, next to a photograph of a young woman. Now this letter, despite having no obvious method, of deliverance is addressed to the keeper of the collection, a post that is presently occupied by me. I'll read you the full text now. Dear Keeper, you cannot imagine the value of the information that you guard. Had circumstance not barred me from it, I would like to have held your position myself. However, I am here, and you are there, and facts are facts, so I implore you to take up my mission as your own. This letter and the photograph to which it is attached are bound together by more than coincidence. The photograph depicts a woman that I knew very well who was a prolific writer and storyteller from long ago. In the time of my writing, I have learned that her memory and writings are threatened. Therefore, I need you to seek out any traces of her in your collection to ensure that what remains of her is immune to these threats and is given irreversible longevity. I will not disappear. There are more letters. You will not be alone. Signed, C. Is that not incredibly exciting? I could hardly contain my excitement enough to actually read into its meaning. But now, upon reflection, I will tell you whether right or wrong my interpretation of this letter. Now, this woman creative w created works, of what nature is, is anyone's guess, which persons unknown attempted to prevent being added to the collection. Now, our anonymous addresser appears to believe some of the works made it in. Now, finding them is one thing, but irreversible longevity is, is quite the request. However, I know that in the depths of the library, there are several so-called permanency vaults, named for their advanced preservation technology. Now, these vaults are reserved for only the most fragile and most important of documents, but there's nobody here to stop me interring the items that this C is requesting. And w won't it be exciting for me to give something, anything, permanence, t to know that it will outlast me, you, probably everything in this whole collection? Just the thought of it, it just, it, it, it would be incredible. The first thing to add would be the portfolio. I've been looking at the pictures a lot and they're really quite lovely. She She's very pretty. That's the first thing that struck me about her. There's actually a few pictures of the woman in the portfolio. 
some of them she didn't notice were being taken. I like the ones where she does notice, where she's looking at you, playing with the camera. She's pretending to act natural, but it's all posed, it's all pretend. There's an inscription on the page next to the letter, a, a, a quote, the only one in the whole book, seemingly. It says, I don't think I am anyone. No personality, no values, no memories. Someday I'd like to find out though. Someday. You know, I think I actually understand that. I like her smile. <clears throat> I'm doing it again, aren't I? Anyway, uh, the, the book itself has actually proven quite difficult to trace. Most of the names that would have been with the photographs have been removed, and due to the nature of its uncovering, it isn't logged in the databases. I will begin my investigations by tracing the only name that I can find in the portfolio. The editor's name, as written on the back, is Robin Underwood. And I'll bet I find his name in the various records within this place. Hmm. I'll try to return with at least the beginnings of an answer. I have returned disheartened. It seems this might not be as easy as I thought. I only managed to find one instance of the name Robin Underwood. I tried everything, from, from residential documentation to, to hospital records, and the only thing that even mentioned the name was a book that referenced a court case, that referenced the portfolio. In the court case, someone was seemingly very angry at our friend Robin. Altogether, though, I, I don't think it contains much to help us. I mean, the, I'll, I'll just skim through the pages and relay anything of note. So, it, he was fighting an artifact collector. Uh, the, the photographs weren't his. Uh, the original photography wasn't around anymore. Uh, meaning that the photos had ended up uh, amongst what the judge called a uh, lost property. So uh, he wanted to publish them in the portfolio for the public, but uh, the collector was, was arguing against that because... Yeah, he, he wanted to find the various subjects and, and give them the photographs? Wait. The collector. He wanted to find the woman. He, he was looking for the woman. The collector, he, he even read a description of her based on the photographs. Citing it as an example in the courtroom. He said the photographs of her rightfully belonged to her. The, well, the the judge in the case ruled against the collector. That's that that's how the portfolio was published. But but the extract says the ruling was in a in absentia, meaning the collector didn't attend the ruling. But why? Oh my goodness, this is something. This is really something. Now, I only have a short excerpt from the databases, but the book should be easy enough to find. It was written by a, a well-published historian. I know her well, or, well, rather, I know her name. Uh, so this book is called Making a Case for Art, A History of Creatives Under Oath. It was very popular at the time of its publishing, but the portfolio reference is hiding seemingly in one of its lesser quoted chapters. 
I'll find the full text. Bear with me, listener. I will return soon. Those villains! Those bastards! Forty copies! Tarnished! Defiled! Ruined! A genius historian! An incredible scientist! Writes a book! And only now! When it proves to be vital to me! It is desecrated. I'm sure it's them. My predecessors, those disloyal, no good deserters, had the nerve to wreck them all. Them all! I spent three painstaking hours searching every sentence of these volumes. For any trace, any name, any detail that might help me. But the entire section, that is, even the extract that I accessed via the databases, was removed without trace. Look, you go through and it's chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then of course 9? A whole chapter. Removed as if nobody would miss it. Well, I do. I need it. And I will find out the identity of our anonymous censors if it's the last thing I do. This is my library, and nobody will withhold any of my facts from me. It's just like this Robin. Robin Underwood. Just Robin's a shadow, an elusive trick of the light. He might even be fictional. I'm quite sure that's what we're dealing with. Robin is a shadow, and so seemingly is the whole thing. The court, the collector, the woman. The only material object that gives any clue to it is the portfolio and the letter information about the author Teresa Wuthering was an expert historian who specialized in the period referred to as the age of art and despite her love of classic and neoclassic works and her career studying the olden times she was an advocate for the modern sciences and one of the first widely known users of ESCM, Electronically Stored Cognition and Memory Technology. Now hang on, I think I've seen that term before, but not in a book. It was somewhere within the library. Yes, yes, we, we actually have some kind of storage area downstairs dedicated to it. Now maybe, just maybe, I, I might be able to find one of these memory units belonging to her. What it will yield, though, I'm not sure. I don't know much about the technology or how to use it. I suppose it's worth a try. Robin's trail has run cold and the unnamed collectors hasn't begun. Um, the, the central computer might have a shot at accessing a unit, but I'm sure it won't be that easy. From what I've found so far, I assume as much anyway. But I must hope. We must hope, mustn't we?
Hello, I'm, I'm back. I'm currently up on the main computer. I did find the unit. There's actually not many down there. They're certainly not as numerous as the books and the records in the collection, so I already guessed they weren't widely available. I managed to do a little research into them via the databases. Thankfully, they're all logged properly so far as I can tell. And it did seem to indicate that their existence was rare in the first place. They also belonged exclusively to a collection of privileged scientists living at the time of Teresa. None before and none after. As far as figuring out exactly what I might find if I managed to access one, well the key appears to be in the name. The database entry for Teresa's unit reads simply, the electronically recorded cognition and memories of Teresa Wuthering, historian. Put simply, uh, I guess everything that makes Teresa is apparently within this unit. I think I have now connected Teresa's unit to the mainframe, so I'm going to try to access it. Here goes nothing. Okay. It says it needs a password. Ugh. I suppose it makes sense, if this really is her entire memory and her cognition stored in a single unit, uh, you wouldn't want just anyone accessing it. But it's impossible for me to know her well enough to guess her most precious password, though. Not even if I read every book she ever wrote. I mean, this is technically all that's left of the real her. She had to use something that would outlast all of her writings. Every word she ever spoke or wrote. Her entire identity. What concept could she use that she knew would outlast everything that was her? I, I, I can't imagine. I mean... The only connection I have to her is this. This mystery. A mystery that seems to span several ages. A mystery with no obvious beginning, nor an end. Robin is a shadow. It was accepted. She, she knew, she knew that someday someone would stumble upon the same mystery and, and draw the same conclusion and they'd come to her for answers. Wow, I feel like a real scientist. This is incredible. We can find the missing chapter. We can find the collector. We might even find another- Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. Is that... is that Teresa? Um, sort of. <laughs>